This is the Plaza Theatre Podcast. The Country Wife A comedy by William Witcherly Act 3 Scene 1 Pinchwife's lodging Later that day Alethea and Mrs Pinchwife revealed Sister, what ails you? You are grown melancholy Would it not make anyone melancholy to see you go every day fluttering about abroad? Well, I must stay at home like a poor, lonely, sullen bird in a cage. Well, I, sister, but you came young and just from the nest to your cage, so that I thought you liked it. Nay, I confess I was quiet enough, till my husband told me what pure lives the London ladies live abroad, with their dancing, meetings and junketings, and dressed in their best gowns, and, I warrant you, play at ninepins every day of the week, so they do. Enter Mr Pinchwife. Come, what's here to do? You're putting the town pleasures in her head and setting her a longing. You suffer none to give her those longings, you mean, but yourself. I tell her of the vanities of the town like a confessor. The confessor? Just such a confessor as he that by forbidding a silly ostler to grease the horse's teeth taught him to do it. Come, Mistress Flippant. She has been this week in town and never desired till this afternoon to go abroad. Was she not at a play yesterday? Yes, but she never asked me. I was myself the cause of her going. But if she asks you again, you are the cause of her asking and not my example. Well, tomorrow night I shall be rid of you, and the next day, before it is light, she and I will be rid of the town and my dreadful apprehensions. Come, be not melancholy, for thou shalt go into the country after tomorrow, dearest. Let me alone. I am not well. Oh, if that be all, what ails, my dearest? Truly, I don't know. But I have not been well since you told me there was a gallant at the play in love with me. (laughs) That's by my example too. Nay, if you are not well because a lewd fellow chanced to lie and say he liked you, you'll make me sick too. Of what sickness? Oh, of that which is worse than the plague. Jealousy. Pish, you jeer. Well, but pray, Bud, let's go to a play tonight. Why are you so eager to see a play? Faith, dear, I like to look upon the player men and would see, if I could, the gallant you say loves me. That's all, dear Bud. And this proceeds from my example. Come, have a little patience and thou shalt go into the country on Friday. There. Or I would see first some sights to tell my neighbours of. And I'm the cause of this desire too. But, but now I think on it, who was the cause of Horner's coming to my lodging today? That was you. No, you. Because you would not let him see your handsome wife out of your lodging. Oh, Lord! Did the gentleman come hither to see me? Indeed? Uh, no, no. Come, pray, bud. Let's go abroad before it is late. For I will go... That's flat and plain. So, the obstinacy already of a town wife. And I must, while she's here, humour her like one. Sister, how shall we do that she may not be seen or known? We let her put on her mask. Uh, Pshaw! A mask makes people but more inquisitive and is as ridiculous a disguise as a stage beard. And if we should meet with Horner, he would be sure to take acquaintance with us, must wish her joy, kiss her, talk to her, leer upon her and the devil and all. No, I'll not use her to a mask. Tis dangerous. Well, how will you do, then? Nay, shall we go? The exchange will be shut, and I have a mind to see that. So, I have it. I'll dress her up in the suit we are to carry down to her brother, a little Sir James. Nay, I understand the town tricks. Come, uh, let's go dress her. A mask? No, a woman masked like a covered dish gives a man curiosity and appetite. Indeed, your comparison is a greasy one. But I had a gentle gallant used to say a beauty mask like the sun in eclipse gathers together more gazes than if it shined out. Excellent.
You're listening to the Plaza Theatre podcast. Please consider making a donation to keep theatre alive in Romsey. Visit plazatheatre.com for more details. Act 3. Scene 2. An exterior setting. That night. The walk is empty. Enter Horner, Harcourt, Dorilant. Engaged to women and not sup with us. Aye, a pox on them all. Did I ever think to see you keep company with women in vain? In vain? No, since I can't love them to be revenged on them. You may see by marriage, nothing makes a man hate a woman more than her constant conversation. In short, I converse with them as you do with rich fools, to laugh at them and use them ill. I would no more sup with women unless I could lie with them, than sup with a rich coxcomb unless I could cheat him. Uh, but hark you, sir, before you go, uh, a little of your advice. I, I have other designs upon women than eating and drinking with them. I am in love with Sparkish's mistress, whom he is to marry tomorrow. Uh, now how shall I get her? Enter Sparkish. Looking about. Why, here comes one who will help you to her. He, I tell you, is my rival and will hinder my love. No, a foolish rival and a jealous husband assist their rival's designs, for they are sure to make their women hate them, which is the first step to their love for another man. But I cannot come near his mistress, but in his company. Still the better for you, for fools are most easily cheated when they themselves are accessories, and he is to be bubbled of his mistress as of his money by keeping him company. Who is to be bubbled? Faith, let me snack. <laughs> I haven't met with a bubble since Christmas. God, I think bubbles are like their brother Woodcocks. Go out with the cold weather. <laughs> a pox. He did not hear all, I hope. Come, you bubbling rogues, you. Where do we sup? Oh, Harcourt, my mistress tells me you have been making fierce love to her all the play long. <laughs> but I... I make love to her. Did she tell you so? I see all women are like these of the exchange, who, to enhance the price of their commodities, report to their fond customers offers, which were never made them. Aye, women are as apt to tell before the intrigue as men after it, and so show themselves the vainer sex. But hast thou a mistress, Sparkish? Tis as hard for me to believe it as that thou had ever hadst a bubble, as you bragged just now. Who oh, your servant, sir? <laughs> Are you at your railway, sir? But we were some of us beforehand with you today at the play. The wits were something bold with you, sir. Did you not hear us laugh? <laughs> yes, but I thought you'd gone to the play to laugh at the poet's wit, not at your own. Gad, the reason why we were so often louder than the players is because we think we speak more wit, <laughs> and so become the poet's rivals in his audience. <laughs> But who comes here, Sparkish? Enter Mr Pinchwife and his wife in man's clothes. Alethea, Lucy, her maid. <laughs> oh, hide me. There's my mistress, too. Sparkish hides himself behind Harcourt. She sees you. But I will not see her. Tis time to go to Whitehall. <laughs> Pray, first reconcile me to her. Another time. Faith, the king will have supped. Your servant, pinch wife. What? He knows us not. Hey, come along. Pray, have you any ballads? Give me six penny worth. Uh, no, plays are not for your reading. Uh, come along, will, will you discover yourself? Who is that pretty youth with him, Sparkish? I believe his wife's brother, because he's something like her. But I never saw her but once. Extremely handsome. I have seen a face like it too. Uh, let us follow them. Exeunt Pinchwife, Mistress Pinchwife, Alethea, Lucy, Horner, Dorolant, following them. Uh, come, Sparkish, your mistress saw you and will be angry you go not to her. Uh, besides, I would fain be reconciled to her, which none but you can do, dear friend. Well, that's a better reason, dear friend. I would not go near her now for hers or my own sake. But... I can deny you nothing. I am obliged to you indeed, dear friend. 
So we are hard put to it when we make our rival our procurer. But neither she nor her brother would let me come near her now. When all's done, a rival is the best cloak to steal to a mistress under without suspicion. And when we have once got to her as we desire, we throw him off like other cloaks. Exit Sparkish and Harcourt following him. Re enter Mr. Pinchwife, Mistress Pinchwife in man's clothes, Alethea. Lucy. Sister, if you will not go, we must leave you. Come, let's be gone, Mistress Marjorie. I haven't had half my belly full of sights yet. Then walk this way. Lord, what a power of brave signs are here. Stay, the bull's head, the ram's head, and the stag's head... Dear. Nay, if every husband's proper sign here were visible, they would all be alike. What do you mean by that, bud? They would all be bulls, stags and ram's heads. Exeunt Mr Pinchwife, Mrs Pinchwife. Re-enter Sparkish, Harcourt, Alethea, Lucy. <laughs> Come, dear madam, for my sake you shall be reconciled to him. Well, I hate him because he is your enemy, and you ought to hate him too for making love to me, <laughs> if you love me. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I hate a man for loving you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. If he did love you, tis but what he can't help. And tis your fault, not his, if he admires you. <laughs> I hate a man for being of my opinion. <laughs> I'll never do it by the world. <laughs> Is it for your honour or mine to suffer a man to make love to me, who am to marry you tomorrow? Is it for your honour or mine to have me jealous? <laughs> that he makes love to you is a sign you are handsome. And that I am not jealous is a sign you are virtuous. That, I think, is for your honour. But is your honour I am concerned for? <laughs> but why, dearest madam... Will he be more concerned for his honour than he is for himself? Let his honour alone for my sake. Aye, aye. Were it for my honour to marry a woman whose virtue I suspected and could not trust her in a friend's hands? You astonish me, sir, with your want of jealousy. And you make me giddy, madam, with your virtue and honour. Monstrous. Well, to see what easy husbands these women of quality can meet. I tell you then plainly, he pursues me to marry me. Oh, for sure. Come, madam. You see you strive in vain to make him jealous of me. My dear friend is the kindest creature in the world to me. <laughs> Poor fellow. <laughs> but his kindness is not enough for me without your favour. I would not wrong him, nor you, for the world. Look you there, hear him. Hear him and do not walk away. Alethea walks carelessly. To and fro. Uh, I, I say I love you, that I would not have you miserable and cast yourself away upon so unworthy and inconsiderable a thing as what you see here. No, Faith. I believe thou would not. Now his meaning is plain. Heavens forbid the glory of her sex should fall so low as into the embraces of such a contemptible wretch. I knew it, madam. You see, he will rather wrong himself than me in giving himself such names. Do not you understand him yet? I can no longer suffer his scurrilous abusiveness to you, no more than his love to me. Nay, nay, madam, pray stay, since you have not yet understood him. Answer to thy catechisms, friend. Do you love my mistress here? Yes. I wish she would not doubt it. But how do you love her? <laughs> With all my soul. And methinks he speaks plain enough now. But with what kind of love, Harcourt? <laughs> with the best and truest love in the world. Look you there, then. That is with no matrimonial love, I'm sure. How's that? Do you say matrimonial love is not best? No, oh, Gad. I went too far, I was aware. <sighs> but speak for thyself, Harcourt. You said you would not wrong me nor her. Who knows how to value so much beauty and virtue? I. Whose love can no more be equalled in the world than that heavenly form of yours? No. Who could no more suffer a rival than your absence? No. Who loves you better than his eyes that first made him love you? I. Nay, madam, faith you shall not go till... Have a care, lest you make me stay too long. But till he has saluted you, <laughs> that I may be assured you are friends... After his honest advice and declaration. 
come pray, madam. Be friends with him. Enter Mr. Pinchwife, Mistress Pinchwife. You must pardon me, sir, that I am not yet so obedient to you. What? Invite your wife to kiss men? Monstrous! Are you not ashamed? Are you not ashamed that I should have more confidence in the chastity of your family than you have? Sir, I am frank, sir. You are very frank, sir, to share your wife with your friends. He is a humble, menial friend. A menial friend? You will get a great many menial friends by showing your wife as you do. What then? It may be that I have a pleasure in it. As I have to show fine clothes at a playhouse and count money before poor rogues. <laughs> he that shows his wife or money will be in danger of having them borrowed sometimes. I love to be envied. I would not marry a wife that I alone could love. Loving alone is as dull as eating alone. Tell you what, it may be I love to have rivals in a wife. Hmm? And so good night, for I must to Whitehall. Madam, I hope you are now reconciled to my friend. And so I wish you good night, madam. And sleep if you can. For tomorrow, you know I must visit you early with a canonical gentleman. <laughs> good night, dear Harcourt. Exit Sparkish. Madam, I hope you will not refuse my visit tomorrow. If it should be earlier with a canonical gentleman than Mr. Sparkish's. This gentlewoman is yet under my care. Therefore, you must yet forbear your freedom with her, sir. Uh, must, sir? Um, yes, sir. She is my sister. It is well she is, sir. For I must be her servant, sir. Uh, madam. Come uh, away, sister. We had been gone if it had not been for you, and so avoided these lewd rakehells who seem to haunt us. Enter Horner, dorolent to them. How now, pinch wife? Your servant. What, I see a little time in the country, makes a man turn wild and unsociable and only fit to converse with his horses, dogs and his herds. I have business, sir, and must mind it. Your business is pleasure, therefore you and I must go different ways. Well, you may go on, but this pretty young gentleman... The, the lady... Uh, and the maid... Shall stay with us, for I suppose their business is the same with ours. Pleasure. Stop. Death, he knows her. She carries it so sillily. Yet, if he does not, I should be more silly to discover it first. Pray let us go, sir. Come, come. Had you rather not stay with us? Pretty Pinchwife, who is this pretty young gentleman? Uh, one to whom I'm a guardian. I wish I could keep her out of your hands. Who is he? I never saw anything so pretty in all my life. Be sure, do not look upon him so much. He's a poor, bashful youth. You'll put him out of countenance. Come away, brother. Oh, your brother. Yes, uh, my wife's brother. Come, come, she'll stay supper for us. I, I thought so, for he is very like her I saw you at the play with, whom I told you I was in love with. Oh, Gemini, is this he that was in love with me? I am glad on it, I vow, for he's a curious fine gentleman, and I love him already, too. Is this he, bud? Come away, come away! Why, what haste are you in? Why won't you let me talk with him? Because you'll debauch him. He's yet young and innocent, and I would not have him debauched for anything in the world. How she gazes on him, the devil! Harcourt, Dorland, look you here! This is the likeness of that dowdy he told us of, his wife. Did you ever see a lovelier creature? This rogue has reason to be jealous of his wife since she is like him, for she would make all that see her in love with her. She is indeed very pretty, if she be like him. Yeah, more beautiful than a poet's first mistress of imagination. Or another man's last mistress of flesh and blood. Nay, now you jeer, sir. Pray don't jeer me. Come, come. By heavens, she'll discover herself. I speak of your sister, sir. Come, come away, I say. Nay, by your leave, sir, he shall not go yet. Harcourt, Dorland, let us torment this jealous rogue a little. How? I'll show you. Come, pray let him go. I, I cannot stay fooling any longer. I tell you, his sister stays supper for us. Does she? 
Come then, we'll all go sup with her and thee. Uh, no, uh, now I think on it, having stayed so long for us, I, I warrant she's gone to bed. <laughs> I wish she and I were well out of their hands. Uh, come, I must rise early tomorrow. Come. Well then, if she be gone to bed, I wish her and you a good night. But pray, young gentleman, present my humble service to her. Thank you heartily, sir. Death, she will discover herself yet in spite of me. Tell her, dear sweet little gentleman, for all your brother there, that you have revived the love I had for her at first sight in the playhouse. But did you love her indeed? And indeed... Away, I say! Nay, stay. Yes, indeed and indeed. Pray, do you tell her so and give her this kiss from me? Kisses her. Oh, heavens! What do I suffer? Now it is too plain he knows her. And this. And this. What do you kiss me for? I am no woman. Come! I cannot, nor will, stay any longer. Nay, they shall send your lady a kiss too. Here, Harcourt Dorilant, will you not? They kiss her. How do I suffer this? Was I not accusing another just now for permitting his wife to be kissed before his face? Ten thousand ulcers gnaw away their lips. Come, come! Good night, dear little gentleman. Madam, good night. Farewell, pinch wife. <laughs> Did I not tell you I would raise his jealous gall? Exeunt Horner, Harcourt and Dorilant. Oh, so they've gone at last. Uh, stay, uh, let me see first if the coach be at this door. Exit pinch wife. Horner, Harcourt, Dorilant. Return. What? Not gone yet? Will you be sure to do as I desired you, sweet sir? Sweet sir? But what will you give me then? Anything. Come away into the next walk. Exit Horner. Hauling away Mrs Pinchwife. Hold, hold, what do you do? Stay, stay, hold. Uh, hold, madam, hold. Let him present him. He'll come presently. Nay, I will never let you go till you answer my question. Alethea, Lucy struggling with Harcourt and Dorilant. For God's sake, sir, I must follow them. No, I have something to present you with, too. You shan't follow them. Pinchwife returns. Where? How? What's become? Go gone? With her? He's only gone with the gentleman who will give him something. And it pleases your worship. Something? Give him something with a pox? Where are they? In the next walk only, brother. Only, only? Where, where? Exit pinch wife. And returns presently. Then goes out again. What's the matter with him? Why so much concerned? But dearest madam... Pray let me go, sir. I have said and suffered enough already. Then you will not look upon my sufferings? Hmm? To look upon them when I cannot help them were cruelty, not pity. Therefore I will never see you more. Let me then, madam. Have my privilege of a banished lover. If you cannot condescend to marry me, you should not take that wretch my rival. He only can give me a reason why I should not marry him. But if he be true, and what I think him to me, I must be so to him. Your servant, sir. Have women only constancy when tis a vice, and like fortune only true to fools? Thou shalt not stir, thou robust creature. You see, I can deal with you. Therefore you should stay the rather and be kind. Enter Pinchwife. Gone, gone, not to be found. Quite gone. Ten thousand plagues go with them. Which way went they? But into the other walk, brother. Their business will be done presently, sure. And it please your worship. It can't be long in doing, I'm sure of it. Are they not there? No, and you know where they are, you infamous wretch. Eternal shame of your family, which you do not dishonour enough yourself, you think, but you must help her to do it too, thou legion of boards. Oh, good brother. Look you here, she's coming. Enter Mistress Pinchwife, in man's clothes, running with her hat under her arm full of oranges and dried fruit. Horner following. Oh dear bud, look you here what I have got, see? The fine gentleman has given me better things yet. I see so. I have only given your little brother an orange, sir. Thank you, sir. 
You've only squeezed my orange, I suppose, and given it to me again. C -c come, come away. Stay till I have put up my fine things, bud. Enter Sir Jasper Fidget. Oh, Master Horner, come, come, the lady stay for you. Your mistress, me wife, wonders you make not more haste to her. I have stayed this half hour for you here, and tis your fault I am not now with your wife. But pray don't let her know so much. The truth on it is, I was advancing a certain project to His Majesty about... I tell you... No, let's go and hear it at your house. Good night, sweet little gentleman. One kiss more, and you'll remember me now, I hope. What, Sir Jasper, will you separate friends? He promised to sup with us, and if you take him to your house, you'll be in danger of our company too. Alas, gentlemen, my house is not fit for you. There are none but civil women there which are not for your turn. He, you know, can bear with the society of civil women now. <laughs> Besides, he's one of my family. He's... <laughs> what is he? Faith me, you knock since you'll have it. <laughs> Exit Sir Jasper Fidget and Horner. I rather wish thou wert his or my cuckold. Harcourt, what a good cuckold is lost there for want of a man to make him one. The and I cannot have Horner's privilege. Who can make use of it? Come. Presently, Bart. Come, let us go too. Madam, your servant. Good night, strapper. Madam, though you will not let me have a good day or night, I wish you one. But dare not name the other half of my wish. Good night, sir, for ever. I don't know where to put this. Here. Dear Bud, you shall eat it. Indeed, I deserve it, since I furnished the best part of it. The gallant treats, presents, and gives the ball. But tis the absent cuckold pays for all. Thank you for listening to the Plaza Theatre podcast. Although the theatre is closed, keeping the building maintained still costs money. If you've enjoyed our podcast today, please consider making a donation to keep theatre alive in Romsey. Visit plazatheatre.com for more details. <laughs>